Hello, I am Jeremy Melvin, the president of the Sargent House Museum, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here to our next live streamed webinar, um, broadcast live from the Sargent House Museum. Um, tonight's event is an artist talk with Vanessa Mihalik, the creator of the Nurse Project, which has been the show we've had on exhibit in our gallery this past summer. It has meant a lot to us as an organization uh, to have hosted the Nurse Project, um, in large part because we as board members who decided to put this on and helped actually hang pieces in the wall and do all that work, we personally have been very moved by it. And we have seen and heard from visitors all summer long about how much they appreciate it and often how deeply moved they have been by it. Everyone who has walked into this room and seen this exhibit has really appreciated the work that Vanessa has done. It has also meant a lot to me personally because Vanessa's art helped me get through some of the darkest times of the pandemic at the very beginning. And as some of you may know that Vanessa had a show that was uh, scheduled to open at the Jane Deering Gallery here in Gloucester in March of 2020. As you may not be surprised to hear, that show never actually opened because everything shut down right before it was supposed to. But uh, I really appreciated it because um, I live near the, the gallery and so almost every day I would walk by it and look at her paintings through the windows of the gallery. And since no museums were open, it was some of the only artwork I was able to see. And since it was March in Gloucester, it was also some of the only greenery I could see because her paintings were these beautiful landscapes of the trees and bushes and boulders of Dogtown here in Gloucester. And so being able to walk by those windows every day and look at those paintings gave me hope and sustained my spirits at a time when it was very uncertain when life would ever be, if it would ever be normal again. And so, this past April, when all of a sudden it was clear that a lot of normal life was going to be returning, and that meant also that the museum would be able to open. Um, at our April board meeting, we were discussing what we could do with the gallery since we had not planned any show, since we frankly weren't planning on being open this season at that point. And my first thought after the, the meeting was that I should ask Vanessa if she'd be willing to show those paintings that she'd at the Jane Deering Gallery here in our gallery uh, at the Sargent House. And I actually ran into her painting on the street corner uh, about a week or so later after that meeting. And as she and I started speaking, she mentioned that she had a whole series of paintings of nurses that she'd been working on over the pandemic. And as we spoke, and as I saw the paintings, and later as I read the words of the nurses that accompany the paintings, I knew that this was not only a good exhibit to host, but a necessary one. The strength of this show is in the quality of the paintings and, the, and, and combined with the depth of the thoughts and reflections of the nurses who are depicted in it. Hung together, they make an experience a viewing that is more than just a visual experience, an experience that is a physical, an emotional experience of healing and the kind of healing that all of us have needed in some way over the past few months. And so tonight we are very glad to offer Vanessa this opportunity to share her thoughts and her experiences of creating this, this exhibit, The Nurse Project. And we're also glad to take this time to publicly thank Vanessa for the work she did and also thank all of the nurses depicted in this exhibit and to thank through them all of the healthcare workers all over the world, wherever they may have been and whatever work they did to help get all of us through this time. So with that, I give you now Vanessa Mihalik. Thank you for joining us. Hi everybody and thank you, Jeremy. That was a lovely introduction. Um, and thank you everybody for attending um, this talk about the Nurse Project. Um, first, I'd like to start off actually by talking a bit about my background. 
Um, as a very young child, I thought of myself as an artist. Um, I never would have guessed that I would become a nurse. Unfortunately, art school was not something that my parents supported. So despite being artistically inclined, I followed my parents' guidance and went to nursing school. After I completed my BSN, I later attended the School Museum of Fine Arts and earned an MFA in, in painting. Somehow, although difficult at times, I managed to straddle these two very different worlds. The following works illustrate the process of re-identifying as an artist after dedicating years to the nursing profession. Um, so I have a few, I have two slides that I wanted to start off with. Um, one is entitled Transformation and it's a self-portrait I did um, from direct observation where I was in a painting studio, but also wearing um, a nursing uniform. So it's kind of half and half um, mix of a nurse and mix of an art student. Um, and then the second painting, which is called Be a Nurse, it's a smaller portrait um, that I created from a performance art series where I actually dressed up in a nursing costume and um, did a lot of different photos and kind of just made fun of the role of the nurse um, because I always took it so, so seriously. So that was a bit fun for me. Um, and those works were created in 2010, 2011. Um, like many artists, I tried to use my artwork as a vehicle for self-expression and self-understanding. I tried to pro process and synthesize my two very different worlds. Um, as both a professional nurse and an art student. My background as both an artist and a nurse provided me with a unique perspective and tools to visually convey the story of the nurse in, a, in an authentic way. Um, and so I have another slide also from about 10 years ago. Um, this is one of the first paintings I created in grad school. Um, so at the time it was really interesting. I, I was looking on the internet to try to find you know, pictures of nurses at work, and it was impossible to find anything because of all the HIPAA laws, but with the pandemic, you can get plenty of that material. It's all over the internet now. At the time, I had to stage this scene where I used myself as a model and acted out just being, holding all these objects um, in this, <laughs> this sort of nursing narrative where you feel like you just really don't have enough hands and I always felt a bit like Amelia Bedelia as a med surge nurse. I didn't last long as a med surge nurse. I was definitely more of a psych nurse at heart. Um, so I got to actually draw pictures of my patients and hang out with them quite a bit more. But um, yeah, that painting is a large scale piece, um, almost life size. And um, it's called Everything is Under Control because I mean, nurses are kind of forced to at least keep the expression or, you know, the idea that everything's under control amongst their patients when really <laughs> everything feels very out of control. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that slide. Um, and it, you just, it talks about how it feels to, to be a nurse, um, and especially probably right now during the pandemic. So I hadn't painted about nursing in about 10 years. Um, and I thought that these previous projects were kind of, you know, that body of work was sort of finished. I had moved past that. Um, and in some ways I had, and you know, it was kind of more about a personal identity versus a nursing profession, um, but they resurfaced again because of the pandemic. So, I mean, this project really was inspired by the pandemic. Um, and last March, I was lucky um, because the Manship Artist Residency in Studios has been really good, very kind to me um, the last couple of years that I've been acquainted with them. And they offered me um, a residency during sort of March 2020 into April 2020. Or actually, no, I stayed through May. Um, and at the time it was, you know, really great because I had a roommate that I was living with and like most people, I didn't know what, you know, how easy it was to contract the virus at work and I was going into the hospital and, you know, I was kind of frightened that, you know, that might affect my roommate and the other people I was around. So it was really nice to actually be um, in a separate space. 
Um, and furthermore, it was great because I actually had a studio space to work in. Um, so I have another slide that it talks a bit about the work I was making at that time. Um, I started painting nurses again. I um, normally have been painting landscapes over the last couple of years, but the next slide is entitled um, Nurse, uh, National Nurses United. And I worked from a photograph I found on the internet about a nursing protest happening outside the White House. Um, just the nurses were pro uh, protesting for more PPE and just safer work working conditions, um, which again, you know, that at that time during the pandemic, it was critical. Um, again, nobody knew very much about the virus. Um, and just there were so many nurses that didn't have the proper um, personal protective equipment. Um, so the, the photograph was that I based the painting on um, was more about the figures, but in the background, I really changed things and made it very, very dark because I felt our leadership at the time wasn't taking you know, us seriously. And it just, it felt like you know, it was just this horrible war and like, it just felt like the world was ending. So that dark background, it wasn't, you know, like that in the photograph, I made some changes, but it is based off of, um, loosely off of a photograph from, I think, um, a reporter, a news reporter at the time. Um, so throughout the summer of 2020, I moved out of the Manship house and I was without a studio again. Um, and I have been, I had been at the time for a couple of years, which has always forced me to work outdoors. Um, I've never really been a plain air painter until I moved to Gloucester. So the tradition of plain air painting in Gloucester did affect me, but also not having a studio affected the work. So, um, it was a comfort to be able to be in the landscape and sort of hide from the world. But as the pandemic took a turn for the worst and the days got shorter and the light left us, little by little, plainer painting was no longer enough. My saving grace was that in November 2020, I found a nice affordable studio space. I settled inside for um, the first time in two years. And without the landscape before me, I wasn't sure how, to, how I, I would approach my studio practice. I'd once been almost solely a studio painter, so my ambivalence surprised me at the time. I was also surprised to find that I wanted to paint about nursing again and the state of the world. I've never really considered myself a political painter. However, I've always been pretty passionate about the politics surrounding the nursing profession. I also didn't consider my work heavily conceptual. However, the nurse project has been less about the materiality of paint and more about the idea. Despite the fact that the pandemic and healthcare were incredibly difficult to look at, to look at full on, I knew, that they, I knew that they needed to be painted. And I knew as one of the few artists that I was one of the few artists that might be able to just not honor the nurse, but also authentically convey an understanding of the nursing role. Like many people at the time, I was frustrated with the state of the world. The tension around the upcoming election, coupled with the rising COVID cases, left me feeling deeply saddened and incredibly angry. Saddled with, these, the, with this energy of both these emotions, mostly the anger, I thought consciously of how I could convert the energy into something positive. So much of our society's fear and anger stem from a collective feeling of, of feeling a real loss of control. So in order to cope, I turned to what was within my control and imagined how I, as both an artist and a nurse, could make a difference. Instead of feeling frustrated, I could feel excited. I could give nurses a voice that they deserved and an opportunity to express themselves. I could do something healing and positive with the negative energy and frustration. And so begins the vision of the nurse project. Um, I envisioned a room much like this one um, with large scale portraits um, and, um, and writing accompanying the, accompanying the, the portraits. Um, I would solicit each nurse to write something that would be displayed alongside their works of art. This was something that I regarded as important 
from the beginning. However, I did not know um, at that point that the writing itself would be at monumental scale or displayed at monumental scale. The initial call that was sent out soliciting participants asked not just for nurses to send me their selfies on the job, but for nurses to take this as an opportunity to express or share their pandemic experience in writing. I wanted it to be a form of true expression. So I invited various forms of writing such as not just anecdotal essays, but also poetry as well, and even sketches if a nurse were artistically inclined. In my mind, the process of writing could be more than just being heard, but perhaps could also be healing for each participant. I reached out through Facebook and Instagram to spread the word. Some nurses I knew personally from having been former colleagues, others I'd never met. The, per the first person that responded to my inquiry was a former colleague, Jen Gallant Davies, who's pictured here. Um, we had previously worked together at Franciscan Hospital for Children. Um, I did not anticipate how her each nurse's writing would affect me and, and the process of making the works, but every single one of these portraits um, just had a tremendous, every single one of the writings from each of the nurses had a tremendous effect on me. Um, but I want to talk a bit about Jen's. Um, I remember very distinctly the day I read her writing. It was very, very cold November morning. Um, and I was drinking coffee in a coffee shop and killing time to meet a friend for her birthday, which I wasn't even sure if I was supposed to be doing because I had been trying to stay away from people, but it was her birthday. So I, I wanted to make the, the effort to, um, to see her. Um, it was cold and dark and gray and I was feeling the hopelessness and anticipated depression of winter sinking in. I was not looking forward to minimal contact with others and limited fun. I was angry with the way I felt that nurses, the nurses' words and advice were being rejected by the maybe, I don't, I won't, I won't say the general population, but half of the population <laughs> um, and that no one was listening to us. As sad and as brutally honest as Jen's anecdote was, it filled me with a sense of purpose and inspiration. Her words were cutting. Her writing so personal, like the page of a diary, unapologetic, uncensored, and raw. Her first sentence read, the woman looked like she was already dead, insensitive, I know. But if you saw her, looked at her two eyes staring off at nothing above a surgical mask, haphazardly covering a nasal cannula and chapped lips, you would have thought the same thing. This was a sentence that only a nurse would write and only another nurse would truly understand. Nurses are far from heartless, but read at face value, another person might question the not so sugar-coated description of a fellow human. Nurses are, nurses are some of the most compassionate people I know. They care a lot and feel deeply, but unfortunately under significant stress and for, they are forced to compartmentalize their deepest feelings so that they can do the other part of their job, which goes beyond the psychological caring and involves the actual tasks and hands-on duties. I can't speak directly or about the intensity of working in the ER. Personally, it's never something I've been able to handle. Um, but as Jen wrote in her piece, I began tasking away, putting her nose to the grindstone in order to get the tangible work done, to do what she could actually control in the moment. Um, there's something oddly um, intimate about selfies I learned throughout um, this process of gathering the, the um, fodder for the portraits. Um, ironically to me, there's something about the act of taking a selfie that's more revealing than maybe posing for a camera, selfies are oddly intimate. As far as execution goes of this particular piece, I don't feel that it's my favorite painting or it's the strongest painting. However, I felt that her expression, almost entirely emotionless, um, the vacancy and the stare in her eyes um, illustrates so, so well how many nurses must cope during this extreme pressure. They become numb. They must train themselves not to feel. She is looking past the camera, past any of us. It is impossible, impossible to meet her face. It's almost as if she's conveying the very fact that you cannot look into her eyes directly and connect because you could not possibly understand her world at this moment. This is entirely different from the other portrait um, of Olivia. 
Um, so this is Olivia. I actually didn't meet Olivia until um, the first opening. Um, I was connected through a friend of a friend's, um, but this painting is entitled Whiplash. Um, and she wrote to me just saying that she felt like her experience um, throughout the pandemic, she was working in the ICU, felt like a, a whiplash, just um, entirely, she felt unsupported, um, but also incredibly brave. So in her portrait, her stare, she meets us head on. She invites us into her world. She looks us straight in the eye. She dares us to meet her gaze, walk in her shoes in the ICU. Um, as I said, her writing tries to convey some of this, her positivity about her profession, but she clearly states she feels everything about her role. Um, or she truthfully states feeling undervalued and under, under supported, but also writes that she feels brave. Through the act of making this painting, I wanted to convey this strength, um, but also the sentiment that it takes so much courage to stand straight in the winds of a storm. I use very paint application, drippy, forceful, expressive brush strokes. I tried to paint with courage and bravery using larger brush brushes without hesitance and applying the paints with confidence. I wanted the way in which the painting was painted to be as confident and as daring as Olivia's dare. Yet, I also wanted to convey her vulnerability, um, which is why I included, there's a very small um, chain that's around her neck. Um, it's just this very delicate um, necklace. So I wanted to include that as well. Um, nurses are even, were even before, during the, um, before the pandemic, some of the most courageous people I know. Um, we encounter heart-wrenching situations more than we like to, but in the best of times, we get them to witness the most incredibly incredible recoveries. Um, the last portrait that I want to talk more specifically about is the portrait of Christina. And this just speaks more about some of the vulnerability of being a nurse, um, but also um, being a nurse during your first year of nursing in a pandemic, um, is, I just can't even imagine. So Christina graduated with her nursing degree in um, 2020 um, and entered the field at that time. Um, she struggled a bit trying to describe her experience as a first year nurse. She wanted to do her job well and mentioned that, that as a Christian, prayer was incredibly important. She did not wish to share a selfie at work, stating that she did not feel right taking a picture in the workplace. I understood Christina's sentiment or hesitance about this. When you are a first year nurse, everything is so challenging and you're so desperate to do what you best. So she actually sent an image of herself um, at the gym after work, um, trying to de-stress. Oddly enough, the dark, the dark composition in the background and the eerie light radiating from behind created a very, very interesting mood. I can't speak for all nurses, but I literally feel like my first year in nursing was so just dark and difficult and vulnerable. Um, I moved from Maine to Boston alone. Um, and I'll just never forget it. It's just it's such a hard year, your first year. Um, it's confusing and terrifying. Um, so I just cannot imagine um, what it would be like to enter into the profession in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, maybe everything else will feel easy when we finally come to the end, but um, yeah, there's something about the, this, this picture she sent me though that just reminded me of this, you know, this time where I actually created a self-portrait that was not pictured earlier in the, um, the talk that was of a similar palette. And it was all sort of subconscious. It wasn't until writing um, about these works and sort of reflecting for the talk that I noticed that the, the backgrounds um, that I painted uh, with Christina's portrait reminded me so much of one I had created of myself as a first year nurse. Um, 
And I just, as I said, I can relate to this immense feeling of weight that you have on your shoulders and just feeling like you have so much responsibility, yet you're still trying to get a handle on how to actually do your job. Um, I'm not a really, really religious person at this point in my life. I wouldn't really say that I am, but I know that I've said, I said prayers during nursing school and I definitely have said prayers as a nurse. Um, so those are kind of the, the three that I wanted to talk about specifically, but there are um, 10 portraits in total. And um, the, first, the first showing had five, and then there's five more here um, with all the writings. Um, throughout the process of making the portraits, I realized that the writing needed to be displayed with equal weight. And um, I felt that they need the, the writing by the nurses needed to be presented on large scale posters. Um, this was a way to ensure that the nurses' words were truly valued and recognized. Um, but not only for them being nurses, but also for the, many of them are incredible writers and poets. Um, so it was just it was great to see that their sort of artistic um, expression come through this project. Um, I was thrilled to find that um, some of the nurses did tell me they, you know, this was very healing for them um, to be able to write their thoughts out and actually have a platform to share their experience with the world. Um, and it felt for me like a complete privilege to be able to be that person that got to sort of sift through um, some of their personal experiences and put together this show. Um, it felt, to me, it felt less like my project that really became the nurse project. Um, and I felt less like the maker and more like a conduit of all the energy um, that these, these people um, gave to me to, to create this um, body of work. So I'm truly pleased with the way the exhibition um, came together and especially to the Sargent House for seeing the value of the work and wanting to present it to the world. And I'm also so, so thankful to the Manship Residency, um, which supported me in a lot of ways um, from start to finish. And I guess that's all. <laughs> We have a question from a panelist. Could you speak about the portrait that is just behind you? Sure. Do you want to move the, your music stand? So this nurse is named Kelly. And um, she was not somebody that I knew personally. Um, but I think one of my friends um, had posted something on Facebook and she had been connected with the project and her photo that she sent me, she said it was one of the only photos that she took during the pandemic, but it was pretty interesting because she was turning 30 the day, the day that this um, photograph was taken. And at the time she had written saying that she really didn't think the pandemic was that serious. And unfortunately she did contract COVID not long after this photograph and lost her sense of smell. And the last time we spoke, which was um, at the, the opening for this exhibit about a month ago, she said that she was able to taste only feta cheese. So it's been over a year um, and she has not been able to taste or smell. Um, but she wrote in her essay that she feels that, you know, she was one of the lucky people um, She's since been able to go back to work, which you know she really she really wanted to do, wanted to be, um, you know, working with all the other nurses. She didn't want to be on the sidelines. She wanted to help out, and she took I think about a month off of work um, and has been back since. But feels that because only her sense of smell has been smell and taste has been lost that she's actually lucky. Um, so just I I think that sentiment alone just so it illustrates how many nurses are just so selfless, um, you know, that you consider yourself lucky that, you know, you can't taste or smell um, and you're one of the lucky ones. And, you know, she could be more angry or frustrated. And what she wrote to me is that she, she feels that um, she was spared. And I, I can't imagine like, you know, many of us to, to lose that sense. 
I mean, it's it's pretty hard. I mean, yes, she's alive um, and well, but that's it's not easy to live without being able to taste or smell anything, um, or even to be you know working the front lines. I mean, day after day, even if you've managed to stay healthy physically, you're going to be traumatized. There's no way around it. So. Could you also speak about um, your favorite piece in the exhibit? I don't, I have different favorites for different reasons. Um, I guess, you know, there's something about the execution of the, the painting process that I enjoy. Um, there is, I like the one I talked about, Bolivia. I mentioned that second portrait um, being painted with a lot of confidence. Um, it's a, slightly larger than the rest of the pieces. So it, it's a little bit challenging in a way. So I was working from very small photographs and to just sort of blow them up. And I don't do like any sort of projection or anything. I paint very freehand. So, but I like the challenge of doing that. So I like that that came together. Um, but I also really like the portrait, which is behind us of um, Julia. I think it'll get this other wall, which is the, um, the top one, which is actually a bit smaller than the others, and it's maybe closer to life size, whereas the others are um, a little bit larger than life size, which again was intentional I didn't really speak so much about that but I wanted these portraits to be fairly large um, and just of monumental scale but Julia's portrait is a little bit smaller and her her actual face is smaller than the others that were painted but I thought it was um I just really like the way the portrait came together I like the the palettes I like um it was sort of a quicker piece and I, I like to paint fast and I like the brushwork. Um, and I do like, you know, just the expression in her eyes that I feel like I captured pretty well in that particular piece. We also have a question that asks, have any of the nurses in the exhibit, have they decided to leave nursing as a result of the pandemic? And have they relayed that to you? Um, I do know of some people who've left the, um, the ICU, I believe. Um, I don't, I haven't spoken to anybody in detail about some of these things, but I, I do remember hearing one person um, decided to take a break. I'm not sure if they went back. Um, I know of other people who are not in the show, other nurses who have definitely left some of these really difficult um, front of the lines type jobs. Definitely some ICU nurses have needed to step away because it has been just I mean, incredibly difficult. Um, but most people I think here are still working. I also want to read a comment that Carol Rain has left. She came to your exhibit and she says, Vanessa, when I left the exhibit several weeks ago, I met someone on the sidewalk approaching it. I asked her if she was on her way to the exhibit and she said yes, then asked if I were a nurse. I said no, and she was surprised because she thought only nurses would be interested. I can tell you that I was blown away by your work and consider it enormously valuable to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And this show was meant to be for everybody. Um, and at the time when I was trying to find a place to show the work, a lot of people suggested hospitals um, and other healthcare settings, but I really didn't want, um, I didn't want it to be limited to the healthcare sort of sector. I wanted, I wanted people to know what nurses are going through. And I think a lot of nurses who are working in the hospital know what we're going through. And I think it's the rest of the world that really needs to gain an understanding of, of what's going on. Um, so it felt really, really important to move beyond um, the hospital walls with this work. As people are writing any final questions, 
Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Um, you know, I think, I think, you know, we're not out of the woods yet with the pandemic and I, and I don't want to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't be doing with their help. Um, but, you know, I think we do need to trust the science. Um, if I were a scientist right now, I'd probably be pretty livid about people's misunderstanding of some of the vaccine information. Um, and, you know, beyond the vaccination conversation, there is still the masking that, you know, is really important. Um, some of the social distancing, you know, all these things are gonna help us, um, you know, just be in a better place. So I think people need to remember they need to do their part right now. And this is not, it should not be just um, the healthcare workers responsibility to sort of fight this. It, it takes everybody in the community. Um, and I, I think that that, you know, I think that's what the nurses need. We need your support. We need you to do the other things that we can't do necessarily. We can't see what you're doing when you're outside in the community. But, you know, just think a little bit about when you go into a store, even though you don't have to wear a mask and you lost or you could, it's not going to hurt you. It's like totally easy. Um, you know, and just help us out with that because, you know, we, it's, it's going to be winter again and we don't really know what's going to happen, but chances are it's not going to get better during the winter time. I mean, science just tells us no. So I would hope by the spring we can be where we want to be, but it's going to take everybody's um, energy and effort. And again, it's, you know, we're not responsible for everybody's health. Everybody's responsible for their own health too. So I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the most important things I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. We have one final question, which is how has the pandemic affected you personally as both a nurse? And we see how it affected you as an artist, but how has it affected you as a nurse? Um, so luckily for me, I work in um, inpatient psychiatry, so I'm not bearing the brunt of um, some of this trauma and I do I would um, classify it as trauma being in psychiatry what some of these nurses are going through it's PTSD um, so I feel like I've been spared that but there is not one nurse or one nursing facility that has not um, at this time dealt with staffing shortages and it's happening everywhere and so it's just making it makes everybody's job harder. Um, I'm a per diem nurse because I want to be focused on my artwork. And I get calls every day, can you come to work? Um, because we just, nurses are either leaving the profession or going other places, but almost everywhere you go, it's short staffed. So that's been the thing that's affected me, but I have to be honest and say that that's been throughout my entire career, which is about 17 years now in nursing is that staffing shortages have always been a problem. Worse now, worse. <laughs> we have a question asking, how long did each portrait take? Um, I think some of them came together pretty quickly. I had some up here that were one or two days, one, probably not one session, that's very quick, but a um, couple, couple sessions for some and then others, I had to rework and it took, um, I don't know, it's hard to quantify, but you know, some, so I'm, I'm kind of the type of painter that if it comes together quickly and easily, sometimes it looks best like in that first layer. Um, and, but if it doesn't, I have to obviously work my way through and it takes um, a bit longer, but in general, I'm not a very finicky painter. They're much more sort of expressive brushwork and looser painting style, which tends to come together a little bit faster than maybe somebody who's more of a photorealist sort of painter. Um, but they're, you know, in general, they're, they were kind of fast pieces. Building the, the canvases sometimes times takes longer than making the, the painting. <laughs> we also have a question about the medium. Sure. Yeah. And so could you, and could you just talk more about the art in general? Okay, yeah. Um, so it's all oil paint. Um, beyond that, it's just, 
I mean, I don't know, like it's oil on canvas. And um, like I said, like the size, I really want them to be large scale. And um, the painting process for me, I'm not sure if that's maybe what you want to hear, but um, I, like I said, I received selfies and I don't use projection. I don't plan a lot with a pencil. I tend to draw with a brush. Um, I'm a pretty loose painter. I keep the painting kind of open and abstract in the beginning and then tighten up um, towards the end. But, um, you know, working from the phone is, you know, it's challenging. And I, I tried to actually not change much about what was sent to me because I wanted, I felt like the act of taking the photo for the nurses was part of the art. Um, so I really, I wasn't trying to illustrate so much as um, really just be true to who they were at that moment when they took that, that picture. Um, but also 